Hello everybody, my name is Jared Bendis and today we are going to go and restore this torn photograph in Photoshop. And this is going to be not quite a step-by-step -step how-to, more of a demonstration about how I'm going to use some, a lot of very weird tools inside of Photoshop to put this baby back together. So what we are looking at here is a photograph that has been mounted on cardboard and somehow over time it has been folded and eventually it came off in two pieces. Now I've scanned in the photograph, I've already scanned it on a flatbed scanner, and when I scanned it on the flatbed scanner, I made sure that one of the edges aligned so that it would be perfectly straight. Best thing I can do is keep this as straight as possible, make my life a little bit easier. I could straighten it if I needed to, but I don't need to now because it's straight according to the map. Now I wanna restore this photograph, I wanna create one beautiful photograph of it. I want to get rid of some, but not all the blemishes. I definitely want to merge it back together. And there's a lot of different ways of doing this. Whenever you do a restoration, it's always challenging because you have to ask yourself, how far am I willing to go? How do I want to make it look brand new? Or do I want to look, make it look like it's old, but well-worn, but nothing like too bad? Lots of questions along the way to go over. Now, the first things first, I want to go through and like a look at my image size. And you'll notice that I scanned this at 1200 DPI. That's as high res as I'm going to do with something like this. So this is a really high res image. Now, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to take, uh, let's see, I've got picture number two, which is the left half of my image. And I've got picture number three, which is the right half of my image. I'm going to take picture number two and I'm going to take the background layer and I'm going to free it up into a regular layer. Do that by double clicking and we're going to call it the left side. There you go. Now you know it's an unlocked layer. And I'm going to take this, select all, copy, and I'm going to paste this, and it's going to be the right side. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save this document as a Photoshop document. And so let me come over here and save it as a Photoshop document, and we're going to call this old photo. So now I can worry, I can work on this document without any worry that this is the document that I'm going to be working with. And then I can close the other document because what I don't want to do is have an enormous amount of data floating around. This is going to be, again, fairly large to work with. Now, I want to make sure that I have my left side and my right side on the same document. So I want to spread out my canvas a little bit. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do image canvas size. And right now, if I were to look at my canvas size, it is 8.5 inches wide. So I'm going to anchor it on the left side and say that I want it to be um, 15 inches wide. I know it's not going to need to be that big. And now that I've done that, I could come over here, I can grab my right image, and I can slide it over this way, and you can see that I have more than enough picture to work with. Now that I've done that, I'm going to start cropping. I'm going to crop multiple times during this process, just because if it's not a photograph, I don't want to work with it. And again, I'm trying to save myself data. We have all this data in Photoshop. So I can come over here and crop this way. Beautiful. So now I've got a lot less data to work with. So far, so good. I'm pretty happy with this. So again, I have my uh, left side and my right side. Now, as I bring these two together, if I were to come over here and look much closer, magnifying glass 100%, you'll notice that as I look at this, you're going to see that there's a tear. Some of the tear is an over tear. Some of the tear is an under tear. And you've got to be very careful because the tear is kind of intertwined together. It's never going to be perfect. I'm never going to be able to overlay and underlay these things. I could, but it's it's you're only going to get so far. And the real challenge is going to be how I'm going to blend these together and get rid of the blemishes that are really are that tear. I'm going to have to restore that one cut mark. So as I come over here and look at this, you're going to see that, again, we've got the over and the under. You also are going to see this strange black pattern. Notice that black pattern has like a sort of a, 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 a grain to it. Well, this black pattern seems a little bit less. The, this black pattern here uh, over here is the mat, and this black pattern here is actually the scanner itself. And so I might be able to get rid of some of that scanner back using our quick selection tool. Let me come over and look just to the right side. And I'm going to grab my quick selection tool. It's one of my selection tools, and it's called the quick selection tool. It's set to 30 pixels. Make sure I'm on the right, correct layer. And I'm going to try to draw and grab and see what happens. Wow, grabbed everything that was black. Now, whenever you're working with a quick selection tool, it's very important that you don't overdo it. I don't mind underdoing it, but I want to make sure I don't overdo it. I don't want to accidentally delete part of the photograph. So far, so good. I don't see anything that it's done too much. It got close there. So I'll come over here and do minus, and I'm going to go to my quick selection tool, 
and do the subtraction tool, and I'm going to grab a little bit of that off there. Again, a little bit of that off there. I want to make sure that I've given myself a little bit room. Again, I don't I'm not worried if I have too much, but I don't want to eat into the photograph because every bit might, I say might, count when the time comes. So that's it. Um, I'll check around the other side, even though this is a white border, and I'm not really too worried about eating into that. Um, all right. So far, so good. All right. So I've looked all the way around. And yeah, and I'm not worried about eating that part. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to press delete. And now that I've deleted that, I've got all that basically clearness there. Now I could do the same thing on the uh, left side if I wanted to, but before I do that, let me come over here. Let me zoom in, magnifying glass, fit screen. Let me grab my right side and let's just start bringing it over and seeing how close we are. If I hold the shift key down, by the way, that'll keep me aligned so that I'm not going to worry about now. Okay. Wait a second, the two halves do not line up as cleanly as I thought they would. That's okay, by the way. I'm not overly concerned by it. It would have been nice if it was a perfect line. They do look straight, though. They just look a little offset. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my move tool, and I'm going to bring a guide out by dipping into the rulers and bringing it down for something that is straight. And you know what? I'm going to use this little roof area right here as my guide. Oops, magnifying plus. It's fun when I listen to this back how many times I'm probably going to go, oops. I oops a lot in Photoshop. No sort of oops and go, oh my God, I'm terrible. I oops, I make a mistake. If you can click it, you can unclick it. All right. So if I bring this up right around there, that looks pretty good to me. And again, that looks pretty good. And if I really wanted to double check, I could bring down this guide here. And that's pretty damn close. So it was a little off. Again, could be the age of the mat. It could be the way it was lined up. But um, we're much closer than we were before. And that makes me feel pretty good. All right. So I got rid of, again, the right side, but not the left side. So do I need to do the left side? The answer is absolutely. I'm going to get rid of the, 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 the cruddy stuff on the left side. I'm going to do the same way. I'm going to grab my a quick selection tool, set it to addition. I'm going to come over here and I mean, why not just grab it all? Aha, let me come over here and then turn off the guides, view clear guides, and let's zoom in and see whether or not I've overdone it again. I want to make sure that I don't lose any image to the quick selection. So far, so good. Now I can go around the outside, which isn't as important. All right, and uh, dipped in a little bit there. I, I prefer, to, I'd rather cut off if I have to than not. There we go. All right, so there you go. And then I can delete that and beautiful. Now I can put the right side back on and get a real sense of where we're at with this photograph. Now the trick is gonna be is the right side on top of the left side? Is the left side on top of the right side? How close do these need to get for me to do the repair? Um, we're getting somewhere, though. Pretty happy with that. Let me zoom out for a moment, now that we know this. And let's do that thing I told you I would do a moment ago. And then I'm going to crop it again. And again, I don't, need, I don't need all this room. That gives myself a little bit more room to work. Fit screen. Look at that. Look at that. All right. So now the question is, how close do I get? It's the big question. How close am I trying to get? And we really have to make some judgment calls about what is needed here. And we, you know, it's hard to see with the, the shingles on the roof or the window how close these two were. But if I look over here at the boy, the arm, this is the big one. Let's take a look at the arm. So the arm comes around and into the pocket, right? See how his arm, not into the pocket, but his arm kind of goes around like that. So now, let me put the left side on top. Well, it doesn't help, does it? Put the left side on bottom. See, now that shows the, the difficulty here. But I'm trying to create this sense of, of uh, continuation, which means right side probably comes in a little bit more. 
And again, this is the tear, but that is the arm. And that is sort of like the cuff right there. I think that's about as close as I'm going to get. And what that means is we come over here, that means we're missing things. We're missing the tip of his boot. Um, we're missing this area in here. We're definitely missing this and this and this. So we've got this tear, which of course is just like lost data, and this tear, which is above or below. All right. So now I feel comfortable about the alignment of our images, which is really important because you want to make sure that you've got what you've got. So now that I've done that, what I want to do is I want to go back and I want to get rid of the parts of the image which aren't going to do me any good. I want to get rid of the tear. So I'm going to come over here to get rid of my right side for a second. And with my left side, I'm going to grab the eraser tool. Now, when you're looking at the eraser tools, there's the hard eraser, which cuts like that. And then there's the soft eraser, which cuts like this. And while for this particular demo, I want to make sure I'm using a hard eraser. In fact, if I really wanted to go with a very hard eraser, I could use the pencil, which is even uh, harder. It doesn't actually use any anti-aliasing whatsoever. And by doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to trim off any image. And yes, I'm going to delete a little bit of the stuff, any of the stuff that creates sort of a black glow or a white glow. And by that, what I mean is, is anything that is the tear or the tear as you see it going through. The little bit of a black edge here is actually what the Photoshop didn't pick up. Now, what I really want to do is get rid of all of this part, right? Because this, this part is the, there's no data here. That's the paper underneath. So anything that literally is torn out of the photograph, I'm going to tear out of Photoshop. And yes, that means I'm probably going to lose a little bit of data here and there, but it's going to be really important that I don't have any of the non-photographic area in this, or at least as much as possible to get rid of it. Now, when you're dealing with things like the shingles or the window, it's not the end of the world. It's going to get much trickier when I start getting to the, the people because there's data there that it's going to be very difficult for me to restore any other way. So I'm going to be very, very, uh, I'm practicing here almost, right? Practicing getting in and out on this, but I want to make sure that I have a sense of what's going on. And again, this is a real-time streaming tutorial, so I'm not going to go, all right, I'll be back in a minute. You're going to watch me do this beginning to end because I don't know what sort of, you know, turns this is going to take as I go. Now, if you look over here, there's like a water stain there. That's a different type of Photoshop. Right now, what we're really trying to do is we're trying to align the two halves, which I've done, and we are trying to get rid of the tear in between the two. Once I've gotten rid of the tear in between the two, then I need to fill in the blanks, and that's the next step. After I fill in the blanks, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look to see what other blanks need to be filled in, and then after I've filled in the blanks, I'm going to go through and remove other blemishes in the photograph. And again, how many blemishes am I trying to get rid of? That's always the trick, isn't it now? There's so many ways of going with this. Now, that's the challenge here. It's a little bit of white. And I could go with a smaller brush if I really felt the need to. Um, but I'm not going to go too crazy here. Actually, right there, I'm going to go a little bit smaller. I don't want to get a little bit of this in there. Never hurts to work with a smaller brush in the detail work. Could use a tablet if you're more tablet oriented. My photo teacher used to always refer to using a mouse as drawing with a potato. Uh, but you know, you get used to it after a while. And again, you usually get good with it. All right, now this is going to be a challenge because again, I want to make sure that I delete everything I need to and not what I don't. All right, this part's going to be easy to get fixed. Well, relatively easy. Again, there are certain parts that are going to be. It's about the illusion or getting people to look in one place. It's misdirection. It's the ultimate magic trick is making it so that people don't know that it's been restored at all. All right, so there you go. Now, get rid of a little bit of black line there. So zoom out. And so what you're seeing here is a much cleaner edge. The rest of it I'll leave alone. Now, if I put the right side back on, you're going to go, oh, my God, you made the hole so big. The hole was already that big. It was non-data, non-image data right there. But I'm going to be honest with you. I'm much better at going down this side than I am going down this side. So let me save my picture for a minute. 
And then I'm going to rotate the entire canvas 180 degrees. And by doing that, I'm going to be able to work on the right side with the same hand-eye coordination that I did on the left side. And that's just a trick that I've learned about the way my handedness works. I'd rather eat from this way and, you know, go down this way. And that's just, again, personal preference. Does it matter that I'm doing this with the picture upside down? No. Matter of fact, if you look at what I'm doing, it's, it's relatively agnostic. I'm, I'm looking for bad data. I'm not looking at going, look, that's a foot and that's a leg. No, I'm not doing that. I'm looking for data that looks like a tear. And what am I doing with the tear? I'm deleting the tear. Um, later on, I'm going to have to go through and be a little less agnostic with it. That's what's kind of fun about any sort of restoration. If you can restore or you can delete or you can select data without actually looking at the picture, not reading the picture, the more that you do this sort of abstractly, I would say the cleaner and more consistent the behavior is. That means that if you were to give me another image, I would use the same process every time. And then only at the very, very end when I would sketch image specific, would I start to be, do things that are creatively sort of redrawing or rebuilding. So as I'm excising the bad part of the image, I'm not going, well, I'm not, I don't have to second guess myself here. I have to go, that's good, that's bad. This is how close I'm going to get, and that's all that really matters. And that, again, makes you a much better Photoshopper because you're not thinking about the image. You're thinking about, again, good versus bad. It's, it's a signal versus noise thing that happens anytime you clean anything up. And, again, the more you can do this without you know, personal interference with it, the better. All right. As I get slightly quieter because I need to get in here and start to delete things really close to detail that would be very hard to restore otherwise. Again, I'm not going to second guess myself, but I am going to remind myself that at some point the hole I'm making is getting larger and larger. And there's nothing I can do about that because the data is already gone. Uh, imagine this was a burnt piece of food. You know, I, I have to cut away all the burnt food, but do I want to cut away too much? Well, maybe. And remember, if, it, if my technique is good, I don't even am I kind of worried about cutting away too much, especially in areas like this. But I have to realize that, like, I, I have confidence that this part is going to be relatively easy to repair. Of course, that's going to happen in a minute because I'm getting close to the edge. But again, getting rid of this tear. You would think there'd be more over under. That part stuck up. That part didn't. And what you're going to find out in a second is, is that the alignment that I did the closeness of the two halves is probably not going to change based on this deletion. The, the gap is there, and there's nothing I can do about it. Again, the gap is there. There's nothing I can do about it. The data that was torn was torn a long, long time ago. And the data is lost. But, but, we're going to have fun fixing it. All right. This is the most tedious part of this because it is, well, too much. It's the most tedious part of it because it's just a long process and you want to take it slow. Um, the rest of this is going to be a little more creative. Creative processes can be long and tedious, but they are um, rewarding. This isn't a rewarding process yet. This is just necessary. And what you don't want to do is skip the necessary parts. Here we go. Excellent. Beautiful. All right. Put the right left side back on. And then image rotation 180 degrees. Magnifying glass fixed screen. And again, let me zoom in real fast. Now, does it matter which is on top and which is on bottom? No because they should be actually separated. There should be no difference here. Now the question is, uh, do I need to bring this any closer? And the answer is, uh, not really. Oops. There's that oops again. Oops, wrong picture. Now, do I bring it any closer? No, that's that's it. There it is. All right, so I need to fill in the, the blanks here. Now, when it comes to filling in the blanks, 
there are many different ways you can do this in Photoshop. Uh, in the olden days, we would use the, um, 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 what's that tool again? That's the tool we would use. We would use the, uh, Robert, the clone stamp tool. I don't use the clone stamp tool. We don't need the clone stamp tool. We've got the patch tool, but the patch tool really hates transparent areas. So one of the things that we're going to do here is a little bit bizarre. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a neutral tone in the image. So this is a light tone in the image, this is a dark tone in the image, and I would say this is a neutral tone in the image. And I'm going to start with that neutral tone in the image. I'm going to take that neutral tone in the image and I'm going to make a new layer, layer, new, oops, layer, new, layer. I'm going to fill it with that color. I'm going to bring it to the bottom. And what you're going to notice is, it's like, wow, that, that, that really shows you what you've got. And all of a sudden, you're like, wait a second, that, that gap is not as bad as it was. Isn't it amazing how quickly that gap changes? Matter of fact, if we go over here to the, um, the hue saturation, and I just come over and start changing with the lightness, you can almost find the perfect um, color or the perfect hue that is least offensive. And of course, where are you looking? Did you look here? Did you look here? Or are you looking here, which is, of course, the danger zone? And so what you really want to be looking at is what is the color that would be least offensive to the part that's going to be the most difficult to edit. Uh, and again, I picked something relatively neutral, um, and I kind of stand by that. Um, I'm going to go there, because I think that's the most least offensive across the board. doesn't really matter. Just kind of a nice little way of setting up a, a base tone. All right. So before I continue... I need to point out one other little error that would happen that if I wasn't careful about would induce all sorts of grief. And that is, if I were to come over here to my right side image and I would add a stroke on the outside of my image, what you're going to notice is, is there's this black line here. That black line is because there's a thin black line that you wouldn't have noticed that was part of the selection that I made earlier. And that black line would show up when I merge these two together. So I'd want to make sure to get rid of that. So I'm going to go over some clear the layer style. If I come over here and put a stroke on this one, you're going to notice that there's an image, there's a black line on this side. And I want to get rid of that one as well. It's an artifact from using the selection tool. It's one of those things. Those little dots over there, I'm not too worried about those. I could, if I really wanted to, I could come over here and start, like, you know, getting rid of some of them. This is a stray pixel here or there, and that's not going to affect me later on too much. But uh, the other would be devastating. And I can actually demonstrate how much overlap there isn't by making this stroke red and, um, let's say, 10 pixels. And you can see exen again exactly where that um, where those pixels are. That's why I do this. It's just a nice way of looking for things that are outliers. And there would have been a straight line there. And then I'll get rid of any of the other outliers there. Again, this is just temporary. It's just a way of highlighting. Oops. It's a way of highlighting straight pixels. And then if I go to the right side and I put a stroke on this one and I make it uh, blue. you'll see where the straight pixels are on the blue side. And I'll get rid of some of those. And again, this is, the, the, the straight, the, the small straight pixels are important. The giant black line that would have looked like a scanner malfunction is huge. And again, it's an artifact of using the selection, the, the quick selection tool is that it probably left a thin, thin line. So it's really important to sort of look for those things before you continue. Because otherwise, that's to get a black line all the way through like it was an error on the scanner bed. By bringing them both up, you're going to notice there's, there's almost zero overlap between the red and the blue. So that doesn't bother me at all. So I can come over here and I can clear this layer style and I can clear this layer style. Now that I've done this, before I merge together and move on to the next thing, what I'm going to do is I am going to take these three layers and I'm going to uh, layer new group from layers. And this is going to be called my backup, which is mostly for uh, reference purposes. I don't really need to do this. And then I can duplicate the group. And I can merge that group together. And this is going to be my photo. 
So I've got my photo and my backup, and they're again, they're merged together. The, the photo is just all three layers as one, but the backup is ready to go. And this is really important that I do this, A, because it gives me room to compare later on, and also in case I really horribly screw up. And notice, by the way, if I did screw up, I would be able to go back and fix things. To be honest with you, when I was editing, I did screw up. And I actually went back up and went and backed it up a little bit. You wouldn't even notice. But if you saw there was a cut, it's because I made a mistake, realized my mistake, and went back. But you didn't need to see all that. All right, let's continue. Now, let's go back and take a look where our photo begins. And we're going to start with the easy part. We're going to start by getting rid of this gap. And we've got the, the white, the sky, and the roof. I can do this in slower segments. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to grab my patch tool. I'm going to patch my source. I'm going to grab the part that I do not like. I'm going to drag it to a part that I do like. And again, I want to make sure that I keep that straight line as straight as possible, especially on the top. And I want to split the difference. So I can. I don't want to. I get, if, I, if I'm looking on the right, it's perfectly lined up. But the left is wrong. If I look on the left, the, the, I make the left perfectly lined up. The right is wrong. So I want to kind of go in between the two in between the two until there's a perfect merge. And the best part is, is that that part looks great. This part's a little bit weird. It's a little bit weird because we've got that black-ish background type thing. But I can grab the part that isn't perfect, and I can grab it to somewhere else. And now you can't see exactly where it was, and that's the point. But this line here, you couldn't even tell. And that's what I'm looking for. Now you can tell because this blemish is the same as that blemish. So what I'll do is I'll grab that blemish and I'll slide it this way. And now you can't because it's only one there. I'm not too worried about the little black outline. I'm going to fix that a little bit. Now, from this perspective, I'm going to grab all the way down to the, where the roof begins, but no further. And I'm going to come over here. And again, I'm looking at the roof, splitting the difference. Maybe I'll go this way instead. And there you go. And that's great, except now I've got this dot, which I don't want. This thing, which, of course, is a duplicate over here. And this one over here, which is, now it's great. Now that I've done that, I can come over here and start grabbing parts of the roof. I'm not going to grab huge amounts of the roof at once because I want to make sure that everything I do is organic, that everything I do has a sense of, well, that looks good, that looks good, that looks good, so that every time I do something, it's going to be a little bit off in one way or the other, and not just create some straight line of edit all the way down. So again, I'm going to do it in small sections. You're like, but it takes more time. And yes, I know. It's a little bit off there, but again, is that is that blemish there? Is that Photoshop or is that the roof? Because that's the funny thing about the roof, right? You can't necessarily tell, and you won't know. You won't necessarily tell because you're like, is that blemish there? Photoshop the roof? Well, that's the roof. We didn't edit over there, so that's the fun part. So I'm going to keep going through and grabbing parts and lining it up. And again, the roof has got a pattern to it, but again, as long as I don't see a straight line on either the left or the right, I'm doing fine. Now let's come over here. Now remember, this blemish here, that's a tear, but not the same type of tear. It's a different type of tear, and we'll get back to that in a second. Oh, I'll do it right now. I'll grab the tear, and I will find on the same relative line. Notice, by the way, I'm using weird shapes. I'm using weird shapes because you're not going to necessarily notice it. If I did a big square, you might start noticing the square. That little white line there, gone. You know, But am I going to get rid of that little white line? I don't know. At some point, you're going to say, like, dude, the photo is old. I can't get rid of every single blemish. Um, but which blemishes draw your eye, right? That's the one. Like, which blemishes are going to make you say, oh, look, there's a tear? Is it the black blemishes? Is it the white blemishes? Or is it the big gaping holes? Now, let's come over here to this part. Oh, this is going to be fun. All right, so that, that worked. Look at that. A little bit off right there, a little bit off right there, but I can come grab that, and now I'm a little happier. Now, before I reconstruct the window, and yes, I have to reconstruct the window, let's come over here and put this. Now, I could go the other way around. I could patch my destination, and when you patch your destination, what you do is, is you grab a section that you do like, and you drag it on the section that you don't like, and that also works is so fun. So again, I can grab a section that I do like, and I could come over here and drag it into place. And you'll notice that what's difficult for me, you may not notice it right away, is that my snap is turned on, and I can feel it's trying to snap into place, which I don't want it to do. 
So I'm going to come over here and do this again with the snap turned off and see if that works. That looks a little bit better. You see, by the way, it's still a little too light at times, and that's going to happen when you're dealing with darker to light. That's why it's really kind of an art form to figure out what piece goes where. Um, I'll show you another trick in a minute if this gets worse. Because there's so many tricks you can do as you work down the image. Yeah, see, it's never gonna it's never gonna be happy. Well, you know what? If it's never gonna be happy, I'm gonna pretend to use the clone stamp tool. Instead of using the clone stamp tool, I'm literally gonna grab the piece that I want, which would be this piece right here, copy and paste it, put it relatively into place. I say relatively into place because it's not exactly into place. And then I'm gonna paste that there. And now I just gotta fix the blemishes. And that's one way of doing it when you know that there's, a, and again, I'm going to patch the source now. because, And so now that part is, is great. And if I come over here to this part, this line, there you go. All right, so now i got to keep moving my way up. So this is going to be a little challenging here because I want to rebuild this window. So when I rebuild this window, where do I want to start? Do I want to start with the white that I want to continue all the way this way? Do I want to start with the, the, the darker part that goes this way or the light part of the window? So all of these are possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this portion of the window and I'm going to cut and paste it. And I'm going to paste it right like that. And I think I'm going to paste it again like that. That's a starting point. That looks good. Merge and merge. All right, I'll clean that line up in a second. And then I'm going to take this part of the window. This part of the window here, and I'm going to cut and paste that. And one. And two. go. Paste that. And before I go on, I'll just trim off a little bit of the outer edge, and now I'll merge those two back in. So I'm literally building it from scratch. And then let's take a look. I'm going to merge this. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. And again, I don't want that beautiful straight line. It's just dangerous. So I'm going to grab my patch tool, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to say this straight line here should blend, and it blends it just beautifully. That's what ends up happening when you do a straight. That's why like, if you ever try to like put two straight images together, it won't, but it turns into a nice little blend. And now that I have that blend, I can use that blend to my advantage by pasting it into place and using it to duplicate my other areas. And you're like, but it's not perfect. I know, but don't worry. Because we, now that we have data there, I can blend it back into place. And this little line I can get rid of. And again, this over here, which looks a little bit digital, as you can see, as long as I, I move it around a bit, it, the pattern disappears. Now this line here, I'm unhappy with, but I can come over here and it's gone. And this line here, I can come over here, and it's gone. And this line over here, I can drag over here, and it's gone. And now I just got to fill in the rest of the little blanks. It's getting really coming together. And then I can get this dot out of here. This line over here should come from over here. Not pretty good. Da -da -da. Now I've got to get just fill in the last of this little blur. So let's come over here and just grab this as is and see what happens if I do that. And the answer is not bad until I come over here and do the wrong direction. Come over here and grab this, slide it this way, and then come over here and slide this up like that. And you're like, does that work? And the answer is, of course it works. So you have to ask yourself what part of it doesn't work, right? I can see a little bit of a blemish up there, and that's what you want to look at is for like the bruise, right? So there's a little bit of a blemish right here. So I'm going to grab this part here, 
and bring it down. Don't worry, I can get rid of that dot afterwards. Get rid of the dot like that, and then there you go. There's the window. So let's keep moving down. Oh, that makes me feel happy. Oh, see, I'm totally avoiding the kids so far, but that's all right. I can keep avoiding the kids. All right, magnifying, 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 magnifying. All right, so. I'm going to grab this part of the roof. I'm going to find where the white dot is. Sort of use it as an alignment tool. Could have gone a little bit further. Probably went too far. All right, that's pretty good. And I can grab this part of the roof. And don't worry about that black dot. I'll get rid of that black dot in a second. But you can see that, again, I'm trying to paste dark onto light, and that always is going to give me some, some, some garbage. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab... I'm going to grab my lasso. I'm going to grab part of the window that I like. Cut and paste. Slide it over. That's nice. I'm going to grab more. Cut and paste. Slide it over. That's good. And then if I'm here, I might as well start looking at what I'm going to do over here. This area here, I'm going to have to do a lot more cutting and pasting. So I can do it now if I want to. I can just come over here and grab this section. Make sure you're on the right layer, cut and paste, copy and paste, not cut and paste. And that looks pretty good. And then come over here. Now this last part's gonna be really challenging. It's gonna be this little bit up here. So this part, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna grab this. And again, because I'm Playing with it, I can actually remove the part that I've overdone. So I've got sort of all these layers that I'm playing with, even though they're all perfect. All right, so now I can merge them all together and look for the mistakes. Now, I, I am like always using the patch tool. And some of you are like, there are other tools. There are other tools, by the way. I'm not going to lie. There are other ways of doing this. I'm just, I just love using the path tool. Um, to me, it's the number one tool. I could use the, um, the, 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 the healing brush tool or the spot healing brush tool. Spot healing brush tool is amazing. Spot healing brush tool, you just press a dot and it just cleans it up. And the spot healing brush tool is great if you just want to go through and do random spots. And sometimes it's perfect and sometimes it's not. It's just when it isn't, it, it, it screws things up. You can't draw like huge amounts with a spot healing brush tool, um, but like the spot healing brush tool would be, yeah, that that screwed it up. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, but I'll get back to the spot healing brush tool as we need it. And I'm going to go back to my patch tool, and again, I know that I want to bring this over here like that and want it to blend. Bring this over here like that, want it blend. Remember, I kind of duplicated this little error right there because that's the same as that. I'm going to go to this side of it and want it blend. You don't even notice it's there anymore. I'm going to come over here and grab this section here, which was blank, and now it isn't blank anymore. So when I do this, it's going to blend nicely. And uh, now I want to get rid of the part that's too light. Come over here like that. And again, each of the spots along the way where it's too light, I want to blend it out. So you can see that, that line there. See that line there? I don't want that line there. And it doesn't take much for the blend to take over, which is the fun part about this program. Watch it sort of create that natural blend for me. All right. Now, let's zoom out, and we're going to see um, how bad it looks. A little bit of, of, like a, of a lightness there and a darkness there. But again, almost have to ask yourself, is that there 
would that be noticeable? Is it the real thing? I mean, that's the challenge with all of these things along the way. Because again, there's that there's that darkness that was already coming into play here. If I'm unhappy with this, I could come back in with the um, I come back in with the burn tool, and I could go to the midtones, and I could do a little bit of a midtone burn, which basically makes it's a it's a exposure tool. So let me undo that, and you can see that what I did was is I just sort of made the midtones darker. That may have been way too much though. I could do the highlights. See if the highlights will work. There we go. See how that worked? I just kind of darkened up the highlights a little bit. And again, if I undo, you can almost barely see what I've done, but it's a uh, a little bit of subtlety there. So yeah, let me come back and show you what I just did. So if I before I burned it and after I burned it, you see it just brought down a little bit. So I'm basically grabbing the highlights, which are the lightest ranges, and just making them a little bit darker. This part, of course, is a way is actually a whole color shift, which that's a whole different story. But I can get to that a little bit later on. All right, and again, let's just zoom out. Now is the time to take a momentary uh, break and see how I've done magnifying less bit screen. This is what I had. This is what I have. So I've really zipped through this photograph as I have put it back together. And I've gotten all the way up to here. I'm going to start at the bottom now. I'm going to like, why are you doing that? Because I don't want to get, I want to be in as good as practice as I possibly can before I get to, before I get to the, uh, uh, the chill table. All right, let me come over here to the patch tool, just like we did before. Come back over here, look at the line, split the difference, and not bad, but I can do better by splitting the difference again. Get rid of that. It's all about making it so you don't look, you know where you're looking. So that's good, that's good. Now I've got two cuts here, right? I've got this blemish here, you know, which I want to get rid of by, of course, adding a blemish. And I've got this blemish here, which was on, on, on one side entirely. And then I want to get rid of the double blemishes. Anything that's got a unique pattern to it, you really want to make sure that you're moving off to the side. So if you see that dot, you know, and again, the more you mix it up, the better. This one here is a disaster. Not anymore, it isn't. And it's funny because you see dot, 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 but one of those dots, I think, should be there twice. And then the last hole is this. And the blend does a great job because that looks like a blend, but that isn't a blend. This isn't a blend, and this isn't a blend. That's actually there. That, that's the way it looked. And that's the fun part is you're like, wait a second, did I, did I do that? No, I didn't do that. Like, I didn't do this. That is the way the photo looks. That is not something I had done. But if it looks like Photoshop, it has to go. And again, little black dots, little white dots. If you look at it from a value perspective, I'm sorry, from a tone perspective, so just things that are outside of the range of value, things that are pure black and pure white, they're going to jump out at you. They're just going to, like, you know, call out to you. This black is clearly on top of the photograph. It's schmutz. Um, and I'm going to show you a way to get rid of that schmutz without, you know, Photoshopping every bit of it out. It's actually really ridiculously easy to get rid of that because at the end of the day, if it was the same tone, then you wouldn't view it as schmutz. You'd view it, you'd view it as like, oh, that was just an old photograph. This looks like a dirty photograph. This looks like an old photograph. And you've got to sort of balance the two out. Now, now, now we have a problem. Now we're getting close. We're getting so close. We're getting so close. All right. Ta-da! Oof, that worked. All right, I'm happy with that. All right. Actually worked. All right, now let's try this one here. This one is not going to work as well. Or maybe I'm lucky. Maybe it will. All right, that worked. All right, now we've got to go through and fill in this bit of wood with maybe that bit of wood. All right. That white dot doesn't belong. This one right over here is going to be a little bit challenge. So we're going to try to find one that matches. And there you go. Done. Done. Look at that. Done. So we've got two problems. The tear down her face 
and the hole on the side. Let's keep working on the hole. Yeah, I know I'm introducing a whole other problem. But it's easier to get rid of something like that than not. Again, that's got more of a stagger in it than I want. So if we, if we use this one, there you go. You wouldn't know that was that one. You wouldn't know if it was that one, though. All right, so then over here, We've got no children, so we'll all right. So now I've got to get rid of this. And now I'm just making funky blurry stuff because that's okay. All I need is funky blurry stuff. I just need it so that you don't notice what's there. Because you can't read this from really pretty that close up. Now, before I restore more of this, let's go for the easy win. A little bit of pattern dress. There you go. A little bit of pattern dress. There you go. A little bit of pattern dress. There you go. Black dot could be there, but I don't want it because it draws my eye. Again, I'm totally cheating here now, right? It's, it was there. It was there. But if it draws my eye and it looks bad, then again, I'm trying to create a photo that looks good, not that it is good, because if I create a photo that was good, there'd be a hole in the middle of it because there's a hole in my photograph. So I'm trying to create an aesthetic journey. All right. And then lastly, there you go. Now for this little bit of her hand, like that. Now for the hand, it's easy because we don't have to worry about that part. For this little bit of the hand, that's tricky. And for here, where do I go? I'm going to go this way. And then I'm going to come over here and if I darken it too much, you can see it's starting to turn color. That's not what I want. Let's get rid of all that burn tool. And instead, pass the destination by grabbing a little bit of this and dropping it on the corner. So drop the color in place. There we go. And again, passing the destination is great because it allows me to sort of see what I'm doing as I'm doing it. easy to drop bits on the forehead. But will I be able to save the eye? Yeah. And then for this nostril, That worked pretty good. All right. See, I'm getting quiet. You should. When I get quiet, you should get worried. Because that means that I'm really concentrating here. Again, I'm patching my destination, which means I'm dragging bits that I like and dropping it into place. Doing multiple layers of blend here. Uh, makes my life really easy when you're zoomed in close because you can sort of see the things disappearing and blending as you go. And, but it's that little bit of white that we got to be careful about. So now let's zoom out for a moment. Wow. Let's zoom in for a moment. All right, so that's about right around there. And remember, this is what we had. This is what we have. Now, again, I could go crazy trying to alter the photo, but I don't really know what she looks like, you know. I don't know how much of this is a blemish or not. Is that dot supposed to be there? Is this dot right here part of the photograph or not? 
Oops, I just gave her two dots. Wrong direction. Source. All right. And of course, you see this sort of a white streak here. And that white streak, of course, is just, uh, again, it's, it's there. There's a blemish in the photograph. I can only go so far here. But I'll show you a trick that's going to get rid of a lot of this shortly. All right, so now we're down to making stuff up. What the hell goes here? And the answer is, I don't know. What goes there? And what's funny is if I do the blend, you'll see uh, it creates the dark and the light pattern in between the two. And I'm okay with that. Oops, wrong direction. I'm okay with the, the weird sort of blend here because as long as there's some sort of a, of a separation between the two of them that isn't quite a pattern, then it, it will read it'll read almost properly in the in the final image. Again, I, I want to make sure I'm not dealing with a pattern of hand or arm. I want to just kind of come over here and almost blur it out. So you're like, okay, the two of them are next to each other. But it doesn't immediately scream Photoshop. It doesn't immediately scream detail either. Um, now I could, I could completely do something wild and wacky here. And that is I could grab this hand and this arm right like that. Copy it, paste it, edit, transform, flip horizontally. And then I could put it in here around like that. You're like, wait a second, that is completely unethical. And you're like, yes, yes it is. Now, one of the things that I would do if I were to do this, by the way, is, is I want to make sure that it doesn't show up exactly the same. So I might even shrink it a little bit so that it kind of looks like it's foreshortened. Um, and then kind of come in that way with it. And before I do anything else, I would grab my eraser tool. And now I'm going to go to a, uh, I've got, I've got an eraser tool that's a pencil, but I'm going to go to a brush. And with a soft eraser tool, that'll allow me to create sort of a feathered edge around it, which will make my life a little bit easier momentarily. There we go. And again, I've got way too much on this side. There we go. And now that I've done that, again, Feather the edge a little bit more. Beautiful. <laughs> um, I'll merge the two together. And again, before and after. Um, <laughs> I really enjoy this. There we go. You had no idea. People want to know. They just don't know. Again, I'm trying to create something that feels like a restored family photo. Uh, I will obviously remind everyone this is a uh, now a photo illustration. I am now I have now crossed the line from photograph into photo illustration, which means that this is heavily heavily photoshopped, which I'm cool with because I I mean I'm videotaping it, so obviously uh, I'm not going to hide that's what I'm doing here. But I want to sort of talk about sort of the, the process in which I do this so you can kind of get a sense of it. All right, that's too much. All right. Um, all right, so she's there, she's, he's there. Come over here, get rid of the obvious dots, and anything that's dark, light. All right, now this part's relatively easy because this part here, I can just go this way and that way. This part here, I can go this way. Now that dot there, I'm going to go up with. Again, if it's white, it shouldn't be there. Da -da. Da -da. Hope you're enjoying this. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> that's that's the fun part about this. And again, I said this at the beginning. This is a streaming tutorial um, where I'm not really. I'm kind of going through a real time version of everything I do to do this. Now this part here is this part here. That's much better. Now 
what is that? Is it like a rock or a shoe? Or a, it's kind of hard to read what this is. And I could grab some of this. Again, I could paste it into place, flip it over, put it over here, maybe even rotate it a little bit just to, you know, cover things up a bit. I have no idea what that is, though. I really don't. But it, it, it matches, right? So then I can do that, uh, at which point I can blend it, and then I can just start blending everything together. So I can say, blend this portion, blend this portion, whatever this is, come from over here. Blend this portion like that. Grab this portion out of the way. Okay, now that's a problem. Let me go back to that. Anything that's bright and white, or that's bright and bright, areas of high contrast really are noticeable. So areas that are really dark, areas that are really light, areas that are sort of in between there. If I come over here and do this to her shoe, a little bit of off on her foot, but you don't notice it right away. And that's not a problem. Now the top of his boot's going to be a slightly different problem if I don't grab enough. Which I think I did. I think I did grab enough. And then again, like that. And like that. All right, so now we have this last bit of just stuff, which I'm going to replace with this dark background over here, like there's more. There we go. So, wow. <laughs> now, we still have other areas that we need to look at. There's still um, mistakes that we have, but I'm, I'm going to let it sit there for a minute. Oh, wait, wait. No, we're right there, right there. We still have a little bit of a too bright area right there. That, that, that little bit of a spot becomes a real annoyance for us. So... We grab that light spot and we bring it somewhere darker and hopefully that it darkens it up, darken it up too much. And again, there's nothing like mixing it up. All right, let's see if that works better. Much better. Yeah, I have no idea what was in front of his foot. And you don't notice that her toe is cut, fully cut off. And that looks like it, I mean, there's there's organics to this. this. This actually works fairly well. All right, what else is screaming? Oh, okay, so let's talk about the stuff that's screaming, right? The screaming part is this 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 black, this, this tear right here, right? So I can come over here and try to get it all at once. Dangerous to try to get it all at once, but I can try to get it all at once. Okay, I can grab the dot right over here. That's good. And again, looking for the things that are, this blemish is not even in the photograph, that's on, it's on top of the photograph. So easiest to get the stuff that are on top of the photograph, right? Just move that around. Now, some of this is just great to work with. Again, I just double, I duplicated that blemish, so I gotta be careful about it. I always be careful about duplicating, I can't get rid of every single blemish. If I did, you'd lose the paper tone, right? None of this is supposed to be there. But man, I don't want those water spots or those those age spots. Again, if it's pure black or pure white or worse yet, a color that doesn't even match, it's just annoying. So that little you know white scratch there is gone. Again, am I going to do every single one? No, I'm going to go for the ones that are oh, like that. That that kills me. But then th this kills me because it's duplicated. So again, pure white. Pure black, long scratches. What about this black scratch here? Now, this one's a tricky one. I could grab some of it and get rid of it that way. And I can grab some of it and get rid of it that way. And I can grab some of this scratch and get rid of it that way. And you, what you want to do is, is not get rid of the whole scratch. You just want to get rid of enough of the scratch that you don't necessarily notice it right away. Because again, oops, repeated dot. You don't know. There's a water mark, a water spot, a water mark. It's a mark made of water, that's for sure. All right, so. 
know you could go on forever, but let's do this one and this one. That's okay. Where's our navigator? All right, so we can kind of go around the photograph. Now there's there's a crinkle in the photograph. I think the worst last offending one is this one right here. And again, this one's a little challenging. So I can grab this part of the image and grab it from there. This part of the image and grab it from there. This part of the image and grab it from there. Uh, but now I've got that tiny little dot there. That's good. What about that? I could kind of grab it from there. A little bit of a blur, but you don't notice what you're blurring. And then lastly, that little T little bit over here like that. Still a little bit of a line, but I'm okay with that. Nothing's going to be perfect. Now this little water spot there that's been bothering me for the whole time is so easy to vanish. There you go. That one's gone. There's a little bit of scratch. That one's gone. Again, I can't get rid of all of them. I can't get rid of all of them! But I can get rid of the bad ones. Look for the ones that are just pure white. And again, not when you're zoomed in. You want to zoom out a bit when you do this. Otherwise, you're going to, again, you go crazy. But I do know that, like, this is a scratch. But that one was, that was, a, that was bad at it. That was just a straight bad at it. So grab a little bit of this one and go that way. A little bit of this one and go that way. A little bit of this one and go this way. A little bit of this one and go this way. A little bit of this one and go this way. A little bit of this one go this way. That one goes over here. This one goes over here. This one goes over here. And now it's much better. I want to do the last part I think I'm going to do on the on the major blemishes is the is the scratches here, but I want to I want to make sure I keep the wire of the fence in there. So it's important that I get rid of the scratches, but not get rid of the, the lines. Because that line, like those lines aren't scratches. Those lines are supposed to be there. Versus this line, which is a scratch. That one goes up, that one goes down, that one goes up, that one goes over. And now you can't see the pattern. So this one here, I'm going to go all the way up to this one here. And the blend does the case. But I'm going to take this one down over here. So that, again, part of this one, part of that one. So what do you need to do this? Time and patience and a sense of what you're trying to do. Excellent. Now, let's zoom back out. Magnifying glass, fit screen, save. Now, I'm never going to be able to fix this corner. There's a little four in there that's messed up. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to cheat. I'm going to zoom in. Oops. I'm going to go to this corner here. And I'm going to grab this corner here. Copy and paste. And I'm going to move it over here. Probably should have copied more. I'm going to transform it by flipping it vertically. Oops. By flipping it horizontally. <laughs> and zooming in. Before I go any further, I want to make sure I have more of this side down. So I'm going to grab this part of the image, copy and paste. So I know where this part goes. 
copy and paste. All right, so now I can paste those two in. One, two, and we go back to my favorite tools. Blend, blend, blend. There you go. All right, so magnifying glass fit screen, what are we at? What is calling out to you as terrible? By the way, I'm going to zoom out one more time so you can see the whole thing. What is screaming terrible to you? Well, the certain thing that's screaming terrible to you is that there's still blemishes. There's still that sense that there's images, there's parts that are black, and there's parts that are, are, aren't supposed to be black. And one of the things that I can do if I go to over here is if I were to hit colorize, all of a sudden, what would happen would be is that the, the stuff that's black would become sepia. And basically, the, the, the bad stuff gets baked in, which is the weirdest thing. Before I do that, though, if I come over here to levels, what you're going to notice is, is that there's actually no white in my image. If I were to frame my image, if I were to go pure white, and if I were to go pure black, what you're going to notice, of course, is that the black gets blacker, and that's not what I wanted to do. I actually like the fact that my, my, my black isn't pure black. And so I'm actually going to drop my output level. By dropping my output level, what I'm saying is, is there is no pure black. And that's going to help make things almost like less contrast. But really, it's, it's creating uh, an area that is a little bit better for me. Another way I could do this if I cancel is if I go to, to the Shadow Highlight tool. If I go to the Shadow Highlight tool, what I really want to say is, is that, uh, and boy, that, that does that, right? What I really want to say is I can lighten up my shadows. And of course, my shadows, of course, are the dark parts in my image. Um, if I come over here and I were to, to bring down this, I could, I could make my highlights brighter, which I don't want to do. And I can make my shadows, uh, I can make my, my shadows lighter and my highlights darker, right? Um, and take a look at the black regions. Take a look at the areas that I'm messing up here. And I only want to bring up the shadows just a teeny bit because what that's going to do is it's going to, it's going to take up and sort of change the value between the black and the other tone. And again, before and after. And when I do that, and again, I don't want to even go that much. I just want to go a tiny bit. So before and after. But by doing that, and again, before and after. Oh my God, that's crazy before and after. But you still see we have these areas that are complete darkness. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to bring down my output level just a little bit, which is fine. I'm going to bring up my, my, uh, my other elbows a little bit. And then, of course, I can adjust my midtones. So it's a little bit more balance there. Now, if I were to come back over here, one of my favorite things is, is look, look, look at the dark areas here. If I were to bring down the saturation, you'll notice is, is the areas that are pure black now become part of the image. If I bring up my saturation, you start to exaggerate the areas that are the photograph, which will become the orange areas, and the black areas, which are clearly not part of the photograph, which is why the colorize button is so useful. Because what that does is, again, before and after, is it takes those black areas and it bakes them into the sepia. And that's exactly what I've just done here. And this way, all of the things that look like they're a foreign because they're on top of the photograph are not foreign because they're embedded in the photograph. It's an old photo. It remains an old photo. I'm not trying to change that, folks. All right, so now that I've done that, and I could even lighten up the saturation if I only wanted to be slightly sepia. But I'm going to come back over here and remind you that it went from this to that. Oh, yeah, that makes me so happy. Now let's come back over to our levels and go, you know what? I don't mind if this image has a little bit more contrast in it. Now, again, before and after, before and after. Oh, yeah, I love my before and after. But it might still be a little too orange, so I might drop the saturation down a touch. So it's got that black and whitish sepia feel. Now, before and after, before and 
after. The color is very close. Last thing I want to do is get rid of the, the tan that I put in. So I'm going to come over here to my magic wand tool. I'm going to set this to be contiguous, and I say that I want a tolerance of, let's say, 30. And when I do that, it's going to grab the entire outer edge. Oh, no, it grabbed more than the outer edge. Look at that. It grabbed a little bit into here as well. But don't worry. We can fix that with other tools. Um, and we can do that by using the polygonal lasso tool. And we can subtract from my... There we go. Okay, maybe 30 was too much. Maybe I should have just used the uh, quick selection tool like I did before. Now it's going too deep. All right. Magic wand tool. Let's go with 10. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then I will come over here and I will bring it down. Basically, I'm making my background black again. And there you go. And that's how I restore photograph. Save. Notice, by the way, I left a scratch in here or there. Again, I can't be perfect. Also, it's an old photograph. This part's blurry, folks. All right. Um, I hope... Oh, look at that. Before and after. Before and after. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, again, more of a streaming tutorial than a real tutorial. Obviously, I didn't tell you exactly how to do it. I'm trying to talk my way through a little bit. I hope you spend time with Photoshop. Remember, it's okay to oops. Remember, take your time. Remember, learn your tools. Practice, practice, practice. Save backups along the way. Keep looking at your photograph. There's more Photoshop to come. I hope you enjoy. Thank you for watching.